Hello and welcome to the program. This is Vivica Williams and you're watching Head to Head. Investment and innovation are essential to any country's economic development. Government is often not the one who's able to drive this growth, but they can support it. Yet rather, it's the private sector, the investors and organizations that really make change happen. The Western NIS Enterprise Fund is one such organization, and their local economic development section supports this type of growth. Joining us today is Irina Ozomuk, a program manager at Western NIS Enterprise Fund. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me. So tell us about what this fund does here in Ukraine. The fund was created in Ukraine in early 90s, and back then it was it had the mission to invest into business in Ukraine after the clash of Soviet Union. But according to the agreement in 2014, the investment activity stopped, and there was a negotiation and agreement with the U.S. government to keep the money that was earned on investment and to leave it in Ukraine for what we call transformational projects. Uh -huh. We have four uh, areas. It's educational area export promotion. We have uh, even a loan project like uh, for social enterprises that uh -huh. also solve some problems. And the program I have a pleasure to lead, it's local economic development. And here we talk about the ecosystem of the city, about uh, public procurement, about urbanism, uh, reform of education, investment, startups. Uh, and we do also a big event, which is International Mayor's Summit. Uh -huh. And so this is a holistic approach. And I, yes. what cities are you working with? We work with Kyiv, uh -huh. obviously. We work with Mykolaiv because that's the city that had the biggest like need of, of our help. We work with Lviv and Ivano Frankivsk because they're mostly the local um, activists are very very active and they take part in in city development. Mm -hmm. We also start uh, looking at Mariupol and Vinnytsia because they also like interesting cases. Right. For well, us. let's talk about Mykolaiv. Uh, tell us about the issue there and and what what challenges they had and how you, the investment fund has helped it. Challenges are usually political, uh, economical, and also the level of uh, activity of local uh, society in the city uh, life, basically. Mm -hmm. So the new approach that they had after the new mayor was elected is to create the uh, Mykolaiv Development Agency. Basically, uh -huh. that was kind of a additional instrument to help the mayor and the local governance to implement various projects. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to give them an institutional grant, uh -huh. but we asked them to pick up uh, four projects that they call priority projects for the city. And we mm -hmm. were impressed because one of the projects was in creation of investment map uh -huh. for the city because, you know, the city, they had a big port, they have a big international company. They have a lot uh, of infrastructure to exactly. be able to support this. And uh, they needed to, again, it's the task of the state also to bring investment to Ukraine, but uh, it's very uh, much um, uh, important to, to make it at the local level. Absolutely. This is where the biggest changes actually occur. And it seems uh, municipal and uh, regional authorities are more invested in this. They have their, their people, they're located, they live there, and they're more vested in this type. Exactly. And yeah. the impact will be for local people as well. So they did an investment map, a video, you know, they had lots of press conferences. As And I'm very much surprised that as of last week, we were talking with the McAlive Development Agency, and they said that they had 15 requirements for, like, they, like oh. you know, about potential investments. And even four uh, international companies came to visit the city. I mean, it's not an easy process, but they took a right path, and we will. We, we were there to help. And what we call as well for our fund, what is important to invest in people. Right, Those people absolutely. who will stay there, who are local, who are patriot of their city, of their region, you know, mm -hmm. and those who will who are not indifferent to the to the territory. Well, this, these are the people who, as you said, will really put in the work. And how long has this taken? What, what's been the timeline for this process? We started in the end of last year to work mm -hmm. with them in the fall, but the project was uh, terminated in uh, June. Uh, and then we started uh, to have new projects. For instance, as we have this International Mayor's Summit, mm -hmm. we were working with uh, different uh, companies uh, to uh, develop the methodology of so-called uh, City Progress Index. That's uh -huh. now headed by Deloitte Ukraine. And we want Mykolaiv to be the pilot case, uh -huh. you know, just to test the city on different indicators. And there are three groups of indicators. Investment promotion, mm -hmm. like livability of right. cities, and uh, also the administrative capacity of 
the local government. So we do hope that uh, during the next mayors of uh, summit uh, of mayors, we will be able to present this this case of Mikolaev. And when uh, so you're still working with um, Mikolaev at the time, but now it's really shifted a lot to them to continue this. Yes, exactly. We are ready still to help. Mm -hmm. We are ready to... We want to see how they are developing, you and know? Are they, is it sustainable so far? You said this ended in June, so you said you were also getting back some progress reports and some feedback. Exactly, yeah. yes. And also there is, like, because it's investment map, it was one of the projects. There mm -hmm. were three others, and, for instance, they created the NGO Resource Center. So they mm -hmm. are consulting NGOs which projects are important for cities. Wow. And some of them they co-finance from the local uh, city budget. The other project was also the reconstruction of the main street and the main mm -hmm. square of the city. It's important, you know, that we have this lots of um, Soviet heritage, and mm -hmm. when rebuilding streets, it should have a new meaning also, you know, just to create the comfort of living, to yes. have a new sense of what's like a new Ukrainian city is, and they are doing well in in, in this area as well. And so have all other cities already been interested in this, or or is this something that's really going to present it at, be presented at the International Mayor Summit? Uh, cities are interested, but cities are developing with a different uh, pace. Like uh -huh. Lviv yes. is very good in tourism promotion. Right. Vinnytsia is also very good in business development. Odessa, it's again tourism, uh, a bit like... Uh, What's they, their strength? They draw on their strengths. Yeah, yes. but the, the I think the weak point is that every city now is making a strategy of the city and they all want to have what what is fashionable, like mm -hmm. techno parks, for instance. Right. And it's a mistake because they need to really pick up their added value, you know, yes. and then to develop this, uh, this area. So I think it's it's very important to look at every city differently, Absolutely. you know, and to as as you mentioned to help them to develop their strengths, you know, and and to to progress faster. Mm -hmm. And what are we seeing in Ivano Frankivsk? In Ivano Frankivsk, uh, I'm amazed by the activity of a local community. Mm -hmm. You know that they have an organization called uh, Worm City, mm -hmm. uh, and those are activists who did the first. Uh, uh, urban uh, public restaurant. Oh. They uh, oh. they asked people to give 100 people to give one thousand dollar each. Wow. They created a restaurant which is like just in front of the municipality building, uh -huh. and uh, all of this like 100 people, the owners, co-owners of this restaurant, the money that they get from people coming there to eat. They invest into urban projects as well. Oh. They make uh, calls and they created the first urban radio as well, you know. So, but basically, there, when there is no big push from the mayor, for instance, mm -hmm. the community is taking the role of leaders and change uh, makers. And we do see that happening a lot in Ukraine, especially after the Revolution of Dignity. And I think the main achievement of Revolution of Dignity in terms of transformation in, in us, yes. the Ukrainian, is this responsible citizenship. Absolutely. And people feel that they insist they can make a difference. Exactly, yes. yes, that's very important. And so how do some other cities uh, rank or look when you look at them based on the support of the, if it's a grassroots like Ivano Frankivsk, or if you're seeing a lot from the, the local authorities like in Mikolaev, where are you seeing some other cities fall in this range? I can speak about cities I, I know better. Mm -hmm. we, we work already a bit. For instance, Lviv, it's both ways, you know, mm -hmm. because Lviv, they have very active community and especially local leaders who are, for instance, transforming old factories to make the mm -hmm. creative hubs, for instance, or like innovation hubs there. There is a, I'm a fan of this old factory. Uh, it's called the Rema, where mm -hmm. they were doing medical equipment and now they created a creative cluster there. Oh, there are six, wow. 60 small companies like artists, you know, and they are doing city within a city, you know, that's that's very important. And the mayor there is also is also quite uh, active. So it depends on, on the city, but I think they understood that without this synergy between the community, business and local authorities, it's impossible to do great things. You know, they need support of each other and that's what we see developing now like this uh, partnership and triangle partnership. Absolutely. And what about Kyiv? Where does Kyiv fall in this? This Kiev, is very hard for capital cities in, in a way. Hard and easier because like people are coming to the capital, you know, like people are from all over Ukraine, from yes, all yeah. over Ukraine and from abroad, you know, yes. because it's it's capital, it's something well known. And yeah. uh, I have a friend now visiting me from Macedonia, and she's amazed by, by, by the city, you know. But then in the same time, we had this uh, rating by uh, intelligence unit of the Economist, Economist yes. yes. But 
what impressed me the most that foreigners who live in Kiev they started defending Absolutely. Kiev, protesting, That's, and people who visited. Uh, Kiev I, as I would well. I would call Kiev as a city of contrasts because yes. there are still so many problems we need to solve. You know, like uh, public transportation, the uh, clinics, infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure. Yes. For instance, um, external advertisement as well because mm -hmm. there is too too much of this uh, in the city. But in the same time, I'm amazed by the reparation of roads, which mm -hmm. is which was not not during the last 10 years maybe you know and then like innovative hubs that they are yes. like they're the, appearing here yes and then co-working places you know it, it becomes a bit closer like European capital you know it's a very big mix it's exactly very big and mix. trying to bring to bring uh, talented people we have foreigners here who are doing startups we have fashion designers uh, who are now here we have also very cultural uh, heritage which is developing you know and that all makes a nice uh, vibes in Kiev but still we we are trying to solve the problems uh, that that are needed but that's basically the the, the it's not any, any city yeah. exactly and let's look at some of the other projects you're involved in now i've heard of uh, can actions tell us about what this is Connection, it's a wonderful project, yes. yeah, and even the, the title is, is uh, connecting people, yeah, yes. you can do something and you connect with, with people. It started as a school of urban studies, uh -huh. first one in English in Ukraine, and mm -hmm. it started like models. First it was three uh, and a half months, uh -huh. it was, the first one was dedicated to cities with historical heritage, yeah. and the second one uh, was for cities with uh, post-industrial heritage. Then it was it became a bigger pro program for cities uh, and especially people who work in ad city administration in uh, um, uh, urban planning department, for instance, oh, wow. or architectural department. It's great. It's in English. It was international lectures. It's very practical. But then at some moment we understood that these people might leave, you right. know, because they, they get to provide this great information about how to do urban design and and maybe they'll leave. Uh, yes, right. for this we decided to to be to be smarter and to give them the opportunity to stay. So we created a program which we call Dream Action. Uh -huh. So it's a micro grant project uh, for uh, up to uh, $5,000 mm -hmm. when local again uh, activists are proposing a project of transformation, for instance, the place in front of the library mm -hmm. or like making a nice uh, uh, park transformation or mm -hmm. doing some courtyard of the school. So in the beginning we were a bit afraid whether it will be popular or not and uh, for 10 grants, possible grants, we received uh, more than 500 applications. Oh, wow. And this was the first, op first, first? Yes. So up to now we have already 17 projects implemented in uh, some our kids, for instance, for waste management, mm -hmm. they propose in schools and we covered like uh, uh, schools in 24 regions uh, of wow. Ukraine. So basically that's the program that empowers younger generation to make change in themselves, to be owners of their own project and also talk to the local government saying, can you help me or can I help you, you know, because I know that and what... Well, these are the people who mostly know uh, what's going on, what needs to be improved, yes. the people who live in the community. Exactly, and yeah. it, it means that people should be interested in the community, community and life as well. And they also see through grant programs like this, they see they have an opportunity to make an impact. So these type of programs then you have are really allowing people to be active, to be able to, to change things in their community. And what I believe also and what we saw within this like two years and, and a half almost uh, of local economic development program that small money can make big change. Absolutely. It, we don't Even often sometimes more than a lot of money exactly. is thrown at a problem. And we don't right. finance projects that end as a, you know, like lots of paper, recommendation right, strategies right. that might be somewhere aside. These are, not, know, these are not act actionable things. They're just, yeah. Something very practical that involves people. That's yeah. the most important for us. Wow. And where, do you, where are you seeing people from across Ukraine coming? Are you getting applications from everywhere in Ukraine? Yes. And, it, and it's a requirement because we want to cover all Ukraine and we already have different networks how to disseminate information because we also we are trying to create like a platform of 
activists, you know, of mm -hmm. of tent makers. We call them tent makers, you know, and uh, and it, it works because in some smaller cities sometimes it's easier to make changes, you know, mm -hmm. and they yes. have less financial support as Kiev, Lviv, Ivano Frankiv. You know, it's also a bit of fashion among donors, like which cities to support. But so and I also wondered about this: if smaller cities and, and villages would be more active in some ways. And they are, mm -hmm. yes, and that's why we also organize within this summit of mayors, for instance. Mm -hmm. We organize an exhibition of opportunities for cities. We bring business, like projects that are financed by international organizations, that they could uh, go after this uh, summit, you know, mm -hmm. take all this information and say, today I am contacting this guy, Wonderful. tomorrow this woman, and after tomorrow we do this with them in partnership. You know, we want to give them practical tools. Absolutely. So this summit is not uh, as many summits are. You go, you get some information, and that's where it stays. So you're trying to make it uh, actionable. You make it something where people li leave, they, they start something with it. Yes, that's our reason because, like, if you check the calendar for September, October, November, it's full of events. Right. We don't want to make another event, but we want to make something like really very practical. Last that's year, right. for instance, we translated a book uh, written by our Amsterdam uh, partners, mm -hmm. uh, Startup Amsterdam, and it's called Startup City. After we mm -hmm. presented the book in Ukrainian, mm -hmm. but after that, we made a regional roadshow. We were going that's there, wonderful. bringing together local governance and startup community. And said like listen guys like you can work together you can do a city as a startup you wow. know like solving different problems and that's that's our approach you know just to enable them and to make it like very practical wow and when is the next international uh, mayor summit it's uh, in the end of november 28th and 29th of november and is this something that anyone can go to uh, or how how is the uh, participants provided there is uh, there will be next week already the uh, official website mm -hmm. so like uh, people can register there but we want to, uh, the participants to be people who are related to city life and right. who can use this knowledge uh, afterwards okay. and it supports by the mayor of Kiev and the prime minister because the decentralization process is very important in, in Ukraine now. So they also give their support for this. Yes, because it's one thing to say decentralized, but uh, local authorities and individuals need to know what that means and how to do it. And so exactly. this programs like this are excellent. So what are the next steps? So if we have some final takeaways, what are the next steps? What can we look forward to? Two more agents of change. We are ready to support them. We have one of the programs that I'm personal fan of. It's a called Technovation Challenge, mm -hmm. and it's a coding girls at school. Oh, wow. they, they code for three months, and they do the application that help to solve uh, city problems. Oh, wow. For instance, like it started uh, last year in Ukraine for the first time, and one team from Zaporizhia, for instance, mm -hmm. they did an application that allows to identify the level of pollution in the air. Oh, but wow. the only solution now it's just to escape from that place, you know. So mm -hmm. now they meet the deputy mayor, mayor, you know, just to try to think what are the solutions. And that's great right. when kids are becoming also participants of, of uh, state building or Absolutely. city building process. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being with us today. Irina. Thank you. Today we're speaking to Irina Ozemuk, a program manager at Western NIS Enterprise Fund. Thank you for watching. Yeah.